Atlanta's number one hip-hop station, Hot 1079. It's my Asia Simone. And to the right of me, I have Josh Levi. He is a singer, songwriter, dancer, and actor. I would say triple threat, but triple threat, but you do so many other things. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I'm happy to be here in the A. It's good energy. Yeah. I feel good. Yeah, I, I, you know the A showed out last night. You know, yes. we took the A, the uh, Usher brought yes. the A to the big game. Yes, yes. What did you think about that performance? The king himself. I mean, yeah. I looked up to Usher my whole career. I mean, I've sung, I can't even tell you the amount of times I've sung uh, You Got It Bad for like talent shows and mm -hmm. showcases growing up in Houston as like a little kid. Um, and, and yeah, and caught up. <laughs> all of All them. of the whole catalog. But it was, it's just always great to see black people at a high level. That's like, Mm -hmm. What makes that's like serotonin to me. Mm -hmm. It just makes me happy. Like it, it's motivation. I think for all of us, even if you aren't a singer or a dancer or actor, sure. you just look at that like, wow, I need to be doing more with my life. Yeah, you know, to be on a stage that big and to have thirty point one million people tuned in. I think it was an amazing thing. You but know? it's overdue though, because mm -hmm. you know he he has skin in the game. He's Usher's one of the greatest entertainers of our time, mm -hmm. and um, he's put so much into music into R&B into entertainment and culture so I love that he had that moment and it was very inspiring for me as a new guy coming into the game um, and it was just dope to see and you're definitely even though you say you're new I would say your impact is already great you're headed in the right direction Thank and you. It's, it shows, you shine through you know for somebody like him to pave the way you know how did you find your voice? Um, thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, how did I find my voice? I think from people getting it wrong um, over time, because I've been in, I've been doing music since I was really young, like mm -hmm. nine years old, and I always had an idea of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to say as an artist, but it took me time to kind of like define that, mm -hmm. and so it took so many people being like, "You are." you need to be Usher or you need to be Chris or you need to be, you're this, or you need to be, you need to be more army, you need to be more right. pop, you need to be more alternative. And this whole time I was kind of a combination of a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. So it took me kind of s seeing people get that wrong, um, just like behind the scenes for me to be like, no, I'm not that, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. Or I'm not, I don't want to do what he does. I, I'm a combination of, of a bunch of different things. and. That helped me define like exactly to a T who and what Josh Levi is. I think too, knowing that you're a Libra, I think with me being a Gemini, I know we talked about that before, but versatility is yes. is our thing. That's For our sure. specialty For sure. as an air sign. You yep. know, like we're just free flowing yep. and we're able to adapt to a lot of different things. So you would say that's how you describe your style? For sure, 1000%. Okay. And just very balanced. Um, very balanced. The Libra myself is, um, that's like a, a big thing for us, just like being balanced and not being too much of one thing. Um, and I, I'm like really pro that for as a black artist, because I feel like we are not given as much permission to be multi dimensional. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we're like asked to be like one dimensional. I can relate a thousand you know percent. Saying? Yeah, so, <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah, so. it really is. And that's not who we are. Mm -hmm. And to and be put in a box. No. And yeah, no, we're layered people just like every other person, every mm -hmm. other artist. So mm -hmm. uh, a mission for me and like an agenda for me as an artist is to continue to showcase that like, I'm not one thing and to break that Whatever that whack rule is, whoever <laughs> yeah. made that, whoever made it up, you suck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Because if you naturally do a lot of things, then use all of the gifts that God gave you, For right? Sure, one thousand. Now, one of the things you talked about, you said that playing the piano that was your favorite instrument, right? Yes. So, when it comes to that piano, is there any other instrument that you would play outside of that? If the piano just wasn't a part of your whole music uh, taste and style, I would love so. Playing the piano is my only instrument that I could play. But, um, well, I play a little bit of guitar, but my favorite instrument is electric guitar. Electric guitar. If I could okay. just shred on electric guitar, mm -hmm. I, my happiness level would go up because um, I try to actually make my voice sound like a guitar every now and then. Wow. Um, just like the riffs of like how fast it moves and like the, yeah. 
the grit of like the tone of a, an electric guitar? I would have never thought that, you know, some people were like, hey, I want to sing like this person. I aspire to be like this person. But you basically said you use that guitar as your, you For know, sure. guiding point. Yeah. You know, that's every, amazing. Every song is different mm-hmm. and every song asks for like a different tone and energy, emotion and vibe. But mm-hmm. for my more edgier stuff, electric guitars and like when I perform live, mm-hmm. I would say that that instrument is like a, is a reference for me. It's like, my, I think it's the sexiest instrument out of everything. Wow. Now you're going to make me, when I listen to songs now, I'm going to be listening for a guitar. I'm like, is there a guitar? Yeah. I'm going to pay more attention to it. I it's think there. that's amazing. Here and there, it's yeah. there. Now we talked about Usher paving a way. Who are, I would say the top three people that inspire you in this industry? I'm going to say Michael Jackson. Okay. Um, <laughs> I feel so connected to him. It's, I don't, can't really explain it. I feel like everybody says it, but I really, I'm more soft-spoken. I'm not like the loudest personality or like type of nigga like that. Mm-hmm. So I resonate with him in that way. Okay. And then again, how multi-dimensional he is. Like he's very mm-hmm. layered. Mm-hmm. And the things he talks about too, I also connect with you relate yeah Mm -hmm. um he 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 wasn't afraid to sing about and write about and tell stories about things that bother him and just like his thoughts on the world and Mm -hmm. i kind of have a similar point of view um so definitely mj on top of him just being the best entertainer ever (laughs) ever (laughs) right Um, i agree beyonce is like the female version of that also Mm -hmm. from houston texas Mm -hmm. the greatest of our time that we have right now so can i guess a third one what? Chris Brown? Sure. <laughs> right, right, right. That, I mean, it's like a trifecta. Like, they, you get one, you have to take the other two. Yeah. Great, makes, black excellence. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Now, what's something about you that your fans don't know? Something that you, because as an artist, you know, you can control what you put out. Mm-hmm. And then some, a lot of artists are very, like, vulnerable and open and transparent. What's something that your fans don't know about you that you would like to share today? Um... I think I have some, I think I wrote this down. Can, can I look at my notes? <laughs> yeah, you can. Because every Use time I sheet. get asked this, <laughs> I always forget. Um, but there's so much that I want people to know that they don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's crazy because we always, we always try to, it's so, like you said, layered like an onion. Yes. You know, like we, you show, you can only, you can show so much and someone can feel like they know you. Yeah, but it's weird because... The internet makes things feel like you know someone really well. But, and you don't know them at but all. you don't. There's still a <laughs> lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I do have this. Okay. So my phone, I have a few things. My phone's okay. on Do Not Disturb most of the day. Mm-hmm. I'm like the king of Do Not Disturb. Okay. And my friends and girls and my family hate that. I'm the queen of silent. I'm on silent. Okay. I don't do Do Not Mine's Disturb. I'm on silent but too. Silent. Yeah, I'm on silent and Do Not Disturb. <laughs> So you don't like, want to be bothered at all. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I'm, that's, I have that. And then um, I also have social anxiety. Okay. A little bit. Okay. I, it's not terrible. But people won't know that. They won't know. They won't know. Because mm. it's not like the worst of the worst. But it's more so like certain things. like mm-hmm. For like events and stuff and like parties and red carpets. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy because I've been doing and going to stuff like that since I was a kid, and like red carpets and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But the older I get, the harder it is for me to be perceived. Wow. Um, which I don't think people know because yeah, what? Because they're like, oh, he has his shirt off. Oh, but a nigga <laughs> but, is still, you know. <laughs> I get it. So I told you earlier, I'm an introverted extrovert. Yes. So I feel what you, what you, how you feel. Yeah, yeah. Because when you're in your career, your profession, you're very good at it. You have to do it. And it's not saying you put it on yeah. and you turn it off. It's more of like a, another version of you. For sure. For and sure. so I feel my best when I'm laying in my bed and I'm at home yeah. scrolling on my phone. Like yeah. that's when I feel the safest, the happiest. And so I get it. That's like I my happy it. place too. Yeah. But I love people and I love conversations mm-hmm. and I love... I love conversations too. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's it's weird. I, I know I probably contradict myself, but it just depends, I guess, on the setting. But, yeah. um, and I'm not necessarily, well, everybody's insecure. I am insecure about a lot of things, just like everybody is, which I didn't know. Like most adults are actually insecure. About something. About something. W- do you mind sharing one of yours? Like what's one of your insecurities? Um, hmm. I, uh, well, I kind of said it already. I can't project my voice that much. 
Oh, wow. So, like yelling at somebody yeah, or screaming. I, oh. Like just even speaking. Okay. Like it hurts me to like talk loud. Okay. I don't know why. God, like it hurts your vocal cords. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yeah. I don't know why God made me a singer, but like quiet. But um, Mellow. When, yeah. It's yeah. different tones. It's different pitches. For sure. But that's something that sometimes like trips me out because in certain settings, mm. I can't like, that's why I've learned to just be confident in my like presence and power and not mm -hmm. not to be the nigga that has like so much to say. Yeah. Which I think works better for me. And that's okay because you get to sit back and observe. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then you probably make better decisions than the average person out there because you're actually able to be more reserved. You take time to sit back and think, think about it think. before you make a decision. 1, so that's a good thing. I wouldn't yeah. call it an insecurity, even though it is. Yeah. I would just say embrace it. Yeah. Because it's a part of you. It's who you are. Thank you. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm, I'm working on. I'm learning to love. Mm -hmm. I think the more that you can learn to love the things you're insecure about, the second that they turn into like superpowers mm -hmm. as opposed to things that hold you back. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Now you got a co-sign from both Justin Bieber and Chris Brown. What is that like? That's, I mean, not not only just saying, hey, he's a dope artist, they actually posted you. Yeah. They talk about you. Like, what, what was that experience like? It's weird because I love <laughs> them both. And yeah. I grew up being a fan of them both, um, Justin is actually one of my friends, mm -hmm. um, a close friend of mine. And just having a friendship with somebody that I respect so much mm -hmm. is, is, is strange. And I think in the human experience, it's like, takes time to process. Right. Um, but, but it was really cool. You know, I don't necessarily say that I search for validation, but mm -hmm. when it happens, it's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. It's a really good feeling. Um, Justin is a huge fan of me as a person and my gift and, and my voice and just kind of like my brain, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And then for Chris to do that, like it was just unexpected and I, I, I haven't met him. So um, like just as I sang, sung a bunch of Usher songs growing up, mm -hmm. same thing with Chris. Like, That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. Yeah, it's a great feeling. I want to get deeper into your music. Birthday Dance. The yeah. song went viral. It took over TikTok. I mean, you have everybody dancing to it. And it's so cool. The, the best part about this TikTok is, or your, your song in general is, once you get to do your little dance, like when you tell them to do their dance and they everybody has their own version. Yeah. <laughs> I actually saw some African kids that moonwalked in yeah. the, uh, did you see that one? Yes, that was one of my favorite ones. <laughs> yes, I'm like, wow, that was amazing. So to have a song go viral, when you're in the studio recording, recording do you feel like that's gonna be the one or did it catch you by surprise? Caught me by surprise, but okay. I always believed in the song. Okay. I believe in everything I ever put out. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes more, some songs more than others. Okay. But with Birthday Dance specifically, I remember telling just like my family mm -hmm. and my friends like, yo, I feel like this song is going to surprise people. I, <laughs> I loved the idea of a record that forced people to do their dance, like mm -hmm. to do their one, two. Mm -hmm. And to have a good time as if it is their birthday, depending on what time of the year it is. Yeah. Um, and I like, like we were talking about earlier, showing range. Um, even sonically. So a lot of my other music is more edgier or darker. And this still is, has like a mis mystery about it sonically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's it's more brighter of a of a song. So I liked the contrast of the of this mm -hmm. versus my other music. And I was hoping that it would connect with a bunch of people. But that video of the kids in Africa, I always wanted that moment. To yeah, like I like music. over 200,000 views. Or 200,000 people who actually use like create it. Yes, and use it as a sound. That's amazing. It's crazy, yeah. <laughs> it's the most I've ever had. And, and it's counting and increasing every day. And so, Spotify. Spotify, oh. it's almost 10 million. Um, maybe by the time wow. this is out, it'll, it'll be that <laughs> or more. Yeah, it's um, growing. It's growing every single mm -hmm. day in mm -hmm. real time, mm -hmm. which, is, which is a blessing and just something I prayed for. So I'm really, really happy and really grateful and it's energizing and mm -hmm. motivating especially going into like my first album mm -hmm. um having this moment i love that what is your support system like what, what do you mean like who are your biggest supporters the people that you know you have your that have your back a thousand percent oh i'm a mama's boy uh... and my mom is pro the president my mom and my grandma it's it's kind of like toe-to-toe -to -toe. 
they are toe to toe on uh, the how much they of the fan club. <laughs> I love Lee that. Fan club. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how is your mom doing? I know at one point you posted that she was, you know, dealing with an illness. Yes. Um, how is she doing now? She just got a new kidney. Wow. Yes. That is so, amazing. Yes, yes, yes. So we're about like a couple months in to just like adjusting to that. A new organ inside your body is like it's a it's a weird new thing. Yeah, you know? it it's, is. It takes your body and even mm-hmm. mentally, um, your mind time to adjust to that. But it's just been a crazy journey, journey for the both of us. She's a single mom and she's been supporting me since day one. So yeah. trying to navigate being a new artist and then being like a a real caretaker for her. For her. In the in the great times and the unsexy times mm-hmm. has been a, a really kind of strange and, and at points traumatizing thing to balance but mm-hmm. um it's made for for great music and great art and a great story to tell so it's been cool i know it's very humbling and it can be very emotional yes but i always say that god doesn't give you more than he can handle and exactly. there's a reason that number one, she's doing much better, but two, that you actually, you're going through that with her. Yeah. You know, we don't know the reason, but. At moments, I think mm-hmm. I, God reveals little by little the reason. Mm-hmm. And then at moments, it's like, what's going on? Right. This don't make no sense. <laughs> right. I'm confused. <laughs> Why? Right. Why me, God? Why us? Mm-hmm. My mom's a great person. Like, mm-hmm. it, it would, it would make more sense if she spent a lot of her life not giving to everyone but she's given so much of her life to everyone around her um and and my career is i have her to thank for just like believing in me and sacrificing Mm -hmm. a lot of her time Mm -hmm. and money that she didn't have into just investing into the gift that she saw so for her to need something from need something in return Mm -hmm. and i not be able to give that back to her was definitely a hard thing the process but um but yeah I think like I believe everything happens for a reason I learned a lot about myself mm-hmm. in the process that's good yeah and, and it also helped me balance like what's really important um, yeah. which helps me out a lot in this in this game and weird world of entertainment that I'm in well we're gonna keep praying for her and Thank just you. pray that like you know her body adjust I think she's fine she yes. got past the hard part now it's the the matter of the just healing part the healing part, part. yeah yes. exactly yes. I appreciate that exactly now what in the world do you have coming up what are you working on what is something that everybody should know about um can you give us any exclusives uh you dropped a song that went viral are you going a different direction for the next set of music what's going um, on I'm staying with bringing energy to R&B. Okay. That's something that kind of comes natural to me. It's not something I'm setting out to do. Like, I want to do this for R&B and be the new guy. (laughs) I'm not trying to do all that. It's just I always approached music in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so yeah, a lot of the music that's coming out, it's in that same world in that way. It's obviously different because... I have so many layers to my sound and so many things I'm inspired by. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm really excited about my debut album. Okay. I'm, I've been working on it for some time now. And I'm so hyped. It, it, feels, it feels really dynamic. It feels different. It feels authentic to me. There's definitely some exciting collaborations on there. People okay. I really respect. Okay. I can't say. But, <laughs> you um, can't say, but it, that, and that's fine. Yes. Because I know once you release it, the rollout is going to be amazing. You got an amazing team behind you. Thank so. you. Yes. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. But yeah, really excited about that. Um, and then touring as much as much as I can. I'm going out on the road in March. Okay. Um, and then... Performing is my favorite thing out of all of this, so I plan to stay the, on the road. The crowd, the fans. Yes, yeah. the energy. Like mm-hmm. dude, that's when like the other me, the confident, louder Josh <laughs> comes, comes out. out. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that so makes sense. I want to be on. I'll probably be on the road as much as I can be this whole year. Festival is my own tour again. I'm rescheduling my headline tour um, with some new music, but okay. I'll be announcing that soon. And when it comes to your legacy, what do you want to be most known for when it's all said and done? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, A lot of things, but I would love to be remembered for giving people an escape. Okay, I like that. With my music, 
That's that's like all I aim to do with anything I put out, anything I'm creating, a music video, a visual, a song, an album, a body of work, a performance. Like my my aim is to give people a space or an experience that they can just go away to mm -hmm. um, from their life and feel something at. Mm -hmm. um, so I would love for when my time is up for someone to be able to say like, every time I press played or every time I saw him live, I felt like I went somewhere else. That's powerful. Yeah. And I think you're gonna do that with ease. I just like your energy, I feel it. Thank you. And I just, I know you're gonna go far. I appreciate So go that. ahead and look into that camera and tell everybody where they can find you, where they can stream your music, how they can keep up with you. Lit, okay. Uh, I'm Josh Levi. Just type in Josh Levi, you'll find a nigga with cornrows or a fro. <laughs> um, and you can find my music everywhere. It's out everywhere. Stream Birthday Dance, um, my EP, This Too Scratched Up, if you like R&B or pop or hip hop, all of that's in there somewhere, so yeah. And you can follow me on all social media at Myasia Simone, that's M-I-Asia and Simone with a Y. It's Myasia Simone, Josh Levi, Hot 107.9, we out.